It's time for Real Estate 101 with the Carrie Brown team from Preferred Advisors. Good Saturday morning to you. This is Carrie Brown, Associate Broker with EXP Realty and the Preferred Advisors team. And you're listening to Real Estate 101. I am here with my guest, um, host for the month, uh, Tina Clausen. She is the lumber woman. How are you this morning? I am doing well. Thank you. So um, I happen to, I found you on Facebook. Um and had been communicating with her and then life got busy and and then I thought, you know what, I really want to learn how to do this. So I reached back out and she has really been super helpful. Um so when I say this, I'm what I'm talking about is my husband and I um have a commercial space that we are turning into his shop and um for Brown's tree service. And obviously he's ha- he has a lot of wood. So um I wanted to make something that was original to what he does, um, super heavy. So, because I mean, it's they're all dudes, and so you know, something that could stand up to that. So, I'd reached out to her, and she has been super gracious and is trying to teach me how to do it. So, if you haven't liked her out on Facebook, you really have to because. You can see a lot of her great work, but I'll stop talking. Tina, how long have you been doing this? Um, this year will be five years that I've been doing this. Uh, it started out with, um, we, I had a tree in our yard. It was a sycamore, and at that time it smashed uh, our husband's uh, car, and that was just the limb, and then it was like, what do we do with this tree? It's dangerous, <laughs> and then so... Um, we decided to finally get it cut, and then um, from there, we were trying to figure out what do we do now with these huge chunks, and then um, I reached out to around 20 millers, and everyone kept telling me no because it was residential. They didn't want to mess with it because there could be metal in it, and so finally, I connected with Tom the Sawyer in Eudora, and he's the one who came down and he um, checked out the trees to see if it was uh, if it would be good enough or if there was any metal in there because you'll see that if there's black in there and if there's not then he was a he has a portable mill and he came to me and then he milled it and then as he was milling he uh, he stated that I should not put this on the tree house because that was our initial idea was to make a huge tree house for the kids. And then we would use the same wood from the tree. It would come out to cheaper than us buying it. And then um, after he was done cutting it and then he told me that and I was like, I don't understand what you mean. And he goes, it's all spalted. He's like, this is worth a lot of money. And so he's, so anyway, so then we're like, well, what do we do with it? And so after we found out that, and we had already had it milled for the tree house, um, we then figured out, we reached out and we got uh, it tongue and groove, and then we ended up putting it for flooring. And it is gorgeous. It's still there. It's lasted great. So it's sycamore spalted flooring. And then, um, but... What I also learned, then that's kind of when I started looking online and I started to see that there was a a market for it. It wasn't here yet. At that time, it was really huge in uh, California. And then, um, then, then I, you know, then I thought, well, maybe, you know, because there's such a connection with it. And our neighbors, they're older and uh, they were real emotional about it um, because they'd seen the tree grow. And that's kind of when I thought, too, like, if we could recycle and reuse it, you know. And then so they came over and they saw the flooring and one of them cried um, because they were so happy to see that it was still there. And then um, then I started to think of some more things. And then we had that huge gust of windstorm. And then there was a whole bunch of trees that had fallen then, too. So then uh, I made a crew of men go get me some logs that were falling and stuff and then that's kind of when I started and and I got I even bought my own mill just a little this chainsaw mill and um, he uh, but that didn't last long they got a little wore out on that one so (laughs) (laughs) started to lose friends fast Uh, but 
But then, yeah, I just, uh, to me, the biggest thing is, is I, I think there's such a connection with nature and doing this. And then it gets better because uh, with the epoxy, where I feel like a lot of people back usually want just the perfect wood. I don't want the perfect wood. I want holes and uh, imperfections because to me that relates to us as humans. And so, I don't know. I've just found a whole lot of, uh, I find a lot of different connection with it, more of a nature connection than just money, you know. And I feel like people do too. Like when you work with it and you see it and you touch it, it's it's just, it's amazing. She does some really beautiful tables, but you have stuff to make like coffee tables, table tables, like um, end tables. Yes. All kinds, conference room tables, you name it. Um, you can do, well, really with wood, you can do just about anything. Yeah. No, there's there's so much potential to it. I'm. I mean, I think it's just, I mean, I feel like I've only grasped the tip of it, you know? Like, I think there's still so much more that can be done. But I think, like, the biggest thing is um, I enjoy just seeing people. A lot of it is then when they can see that they could do it themselves. And, uh, uh, you know, and I get a lot of, even, uh, you know, customers will call after they've bought it. And they'll be like, well, how do I do this? Or what do I need to do here? Or, you know, and I always say just, you know, I'll walk you through it. Just, you know, you can always message me. I'll respond when I can. And, um, but yeah, I mean, there's just, um, you know, there's cookie cuts, there's crotch pieces for, uh, perfect coffee tables. Uh, you can do book match tables. There is, uh, mantles. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. And then just dining room tables. So for our office, um, Tina is helping me with two tables, um, that can sit roughly 10 to 12 people. And then we're doing an island. Um, when he he let me design how it was going to set out and everything, so uh, we're doing an island for a kitchen. And my thing is, is I've I've never really understood a kitchen in an office building because you do coffee and you heat your food up, and to me that's a wasted space. I mean, obviously you still need the kitchen, but I just think it makes more sense to have it facing like a for us it'll be a crew room. So we could have the kitchen and, you know, if, if my husband loves to cook, you could tell that if you ever saw me. Um, but he's a really good cook. And I thought, well, it would be cool to have a really cool um, island with the kitchen and everything facing out into the crew room. So just in that one room alone, there will be um, the island and then the two tables. Uh, we're doing the reception desk and then uh, whenever I went to see Tina, she had this amazing piece of cedar that was really long, and we're turning that into a, it's called a waterfall. Yep. Waterfall. I keep calling it a riverfall. I have no idea why, but it is a waterfall desk. Um, so she, I guess whenever she took me on, she had no idea how much she was taking on, but, <laughs> and then I sent her another one. And I'm like, okay, I want another desk, but this one's going to be for me. So. Yeah, that one's going to be really neat. We just got to find some uh, neat wood for it, too. But I think we got some ideas going. So I like the ocean or the blues on it. So I think we'll have some cool ideas there going. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm, i if you've listened at all, I really love the water. Um, I If I could scuba dive every day, I just happen to live in Kansas. But if I could, I totally would. So the the waterfall dust that I'm looking at doing, if we can find the right piece of wood, is uh, it'll be literally beach themed. So like an actual waterfall. So it'll be gorgeous. I hope. Um, if I don't mess it up, yep. Tina hopefully will be around, so I won't. <laughs> no, I'm excited. I think I think it'll look really neat. And what's going to be really cool is when people walk in there. I mean, even though it's like three service cutting, I think two. You can kind of see even the potential with just what's there, you know. And then we have, what, three or four different species you picked out almost? Yes. Because we did cottonwood, cedar, oak. oak. Yeah. So and, least, yeah. And then I've got the guys, um, they are pulling different types of trees, and they're going to make little, they call them cookies. And I'm going to turn that into art to hang on the walls. So it'll be different trees from Kansas for the walls um they'll look like uh, like a picture frame like a an actual picture say i don't know probably two foot by two foot 
but it'll be filled full of each type of species. And oh, okay. So, yeah. Now I understand what you're saying. No, that'll be really neat. Yeah. So use what you have. Yeah, exactly. No, that's, I think that's the biggest thing with it, I thought, is uh, um, recycling it instead of just mulching it. And so it, it's a lot of work and it's heavy and it's so much time, but. I just get so much satisfaction out of it. And then especially when you see the clients, you know, smiling and they get their bar top and you get to have drinks with them on it. So it's a uh, pretty inspiring stuff to get to work with. Absolutely. I told my husband, like birch, I was, I can't remember where I was at, but they were selling bundles of birch for like to put in pots. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I was like, you're not going to believe how much they're selling just these sticks of birch wood. And he was like, we have all kinds of birch wood. I said, not anymore. I need some of that stuff. Yeah. (laughs) Like, we got to use that. Yeah, birch, you can do some really cool stuff with, too. Mm -hmm. I've just kind of been seeing what they've got going on with that. So Um, the other cool thing is is now, uh, like, with the the stump, that's another neat one. I see a lot of the, like the tables and end tables like that with that. So like the root ball or? Yes, the, oh. yes, yes. But that is, uh, the biggest thing though is dry time. Um, so, and they're so, so heavy. Um, that's the other thing too. The last, the one that I just got finished helping with or that him and I did, it was uh, 500 pounds. Holy smokes. Yeah. <laughs> so he put it in his addition, but it just looks, it's all epoxied. And you can see that on her Facebook page. What is your Facebook page? Um, the Facebook page is the Lumber Woman and Company. So they, she had loaded that, and I thought that was really cool. One of my favorites that you've loaded is actually a table that you did a clear resin and had leaves in. Yeah, that was uh, that was uh, really neat. Uh, very, very tricky. Clear is a lot harder with epoxy than um, like a color because the color you can kind of hide mistakes. But the clear, you can see everything. So if you have bubbles or if something's not in there, then it's definitely nerve wracking, I guess you could say. But in the end, I mean, just like seeing all the details on the leaves and they're real. And then, you know, and it's oak. It was the oak leaves with the oak wood. Um, I think it just it just looked stunning. I just, I couldn't even believe how good it turned out, but he just had this idea and I was like, I've never done it, but I'll try it. <laughs> it turned out amazing. Yeah. It was a, it was definitely a fun project. Yeah. Without a doubt. I imagine it was, I mean, definitely gorgeous. Um, so real quick before the break, tell them how to get a hold of you if they are looking for something along the lines of what we're talking about. Uh, it's, uh, my main connection to, or the main way to get to me is on the Lumber Woman and Company Facebook page. You can always message me there. Um, and then I always will respond or message back as soon as I can, uh, just because I have such a, uh, I also work full time. So this is more of something I do than on the side. So then that way I can get back to you as soon as possible and also as convenient for both of us. All right. And if you're looking to buy or sell, be sure and give us a call at 785-213-5188. We are so incredibly low on inventory right now. So if you've thought about selling at all, this is truly a seller's market right now just because of the sheer lack of inventory. So if you've been thinking about it, let us know. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. Southwest Topeka has a good neighbor. State Farm agent Jim Garrison, now at 29th and Urish. If your current insurance situation has you going around in circles, get off the roundabout and stop in and meet Jim and his wonderfully efficient staff. Let Jim Garrison give you a quote and make the Garrison comparison. He's confident that with State Farm's competitive rates, the right coverage, and his unmatched service, you'll want to make him your new insurance agent. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And Jim Garrison is there for you, northeast of the roundabout at 29th and Urish. Are you looking for a career that provides you with wealth based on your level of effort with multiple levels of income, including passive long-term income? If you are interested in real estate or are currently a real estate agent and want to work with a company that wants you to retire with long-term passive income, call your local eXp Realty agent today. And if you don't know one, call Carrie Brown at 785-249-6309. You deserve more of what you work so hard to earn, and eXp is where you should be. Does your dirty air ducts have you continuously dusting? 
Ditch the Dust Brush for our duck truck. Capital City Duck Cleaning is Topeka's new veteran-owned air duct and dryer vent cleaning service. Call today, 785-484-2801 or visit us online at CapitalCityDuckCleaning.com for your free quote. In today's world, health is a huge concern, and Euphoria has the answer. Euphoria is the one and only company to offer personalized designer nutritional supplements based upon your DNA profile with nearly 400 million unique formulas. A DNA test unlocks the secrets to your actionable genes and their influence on your body. Euphoria's home-based DNA non-invasive saliva kit is all you need to send your sample to the lab. You'll receive a customized report addressing your DNA deficiencies with an action plan. To learn more, go to myfuture.euphoriascience.com. Make 2021 your healthiest year yet. Thanks for joining us again. This is Carrie Brown, Associate Broker with EXP Realty and the Preferred Advisors team, and you're listening to Real Estate 101. If you listened to the show last month, um, actually last week, I announced that as of the end of February, I am going to be taking this show to podcast. So if you go out and you look at our Real Estate Facebook page, uh, you could either go to the Preferred Advisors team or Real Estate 101, but there will be a website. It's called Real Estate 101 with Carrie Brown. Um, so the whole point of that is I wanted to get a little bit more creative with the show and actually have, think of it more of as a video blog, um, so that you can see like, like for instance, when we're talking pictures of what it is that you're doing, um, being on site and actually videoing how something's done. Um, so that there's actually, you can see what's happening instead of just talking about it. So the show will be going to a podcast slash video blog ish um, starting in March. So be sure and check that out. Um, okay, so before the break, we were talking about just ideas, but let's talk about the process. So obviously, you have to cut down the wood. Um, how long do you have to dry it for? Uh, well, once once you cut it, they usually suggest like. Um kind of letting it outside and let nature dry it just for a little bit like you know I mean, you can do from a few weeks to a month or so you know let nature kind of take care of it because there's just so much moisture in the wood and then from there you um you can put it into the kiln and then the kiln what the kiln does is you're wanted around 120 degrees fahrenheit which then should then get uh rid of your bugs and then from there you're going anywhere from like a seven to ten percent um, and so, so with a thicker wood, it takes a longer dry time. And so, um, there are some things there, you know, it, like people want the three inch ones or, you know, you'll pay more for it, but that's just because, you know, it takes so much longer to dry if you want it done correctly. I mean, you can, you know, if it's not all the way dry, you are, are risking later on of cracking. And then also, um, if there are bugs in there, you know, it's not going to get them and stuff too. So that's kind of something to um, always remember as well. And so a lot of people will ask. And, and I know uh, as far as the air dry, there are a lot of people, you know, you still can, it still works as well. Um, it's just the kiln is just faster. So, and then after that, um, the wood will always move. And so once you're done the kiln, you get it out of there, you will need to more than likely surface or plane it. And that's where it gets trickier because you're trying you're wanting a level surface and then um i have a basically a router set up to surface and what's nice about it is i can do up to eight feet which luckily that's not ever been the case yet but eight feet wide and 14 feet long but um but usually so far the biggest one i've done is six feet wide and 11 feet as far as yeah and so that was a very big conference room table. But um, but once you're surfacing, you have that, then you got to, you need to sand it. And then a lot of it, too, is getting it to, um, you know, to the finishing process. So that takes a while. It's just there's a lot of stages in it, and it's just to getting it from the, the rough cut to the end. And the is, um, you know, it's just it's a process. You'd be surprised, too, how heavy it is from wet wood to dry wood. Because yeah. Troy had this um, fella, he did some tree work for him, and while he was there, he carved us out this amazing bear. And the bear holds this sign that says Brown's Tree Service on it. And whenever he brought it home, it was still wet. And so I kept cleaning and cleaning and cleaning. It just still smelled 
it just smelled bad. And I'm like, I thought, well, maybe the dogs had gone in the house and I just couldn't find where they'd done it or, or what. And then it dawned on me whenever I got close to the bear, it was the bear that smelled. Oh. So the bear ended up going out into the entryway that's actually shut off from the house. Um, and uh, he spends his, he spent his time out there until just recently I moved him inside. And that's probably been four years he stayed outside. Oh, out wow. In the, it's an enclosed entry, but his smell went with him yeah. into the entryway instead of. <laughs> and I just in put your a, house. Yeah, I just put a lot of air freshener in the entryway. But uh, he was so heavy. I yeah. couldn't budge him. And now I can pick him up and move him. That's crazy. Yeah, no, that's the biggest thing. And I, that's why they suggest air drying afterwards too just because um so much like kind of letting nature dry it out first uh because it and it saves so much process than putting it in a kiln because in there you're dehumidifying you have the heat and you have the fan so you have the circulation going for it to dry it all out and so um i think normally they they suggest one inch per year if you were air drying the wood and so that's like with the kiln you can manage it in Anywhere from like, I think anywhere from six to 12 weeks, depending on where you're at. So my husband, whenever they were cleaning up in Iowa this year, um, he brought me home this medallion. It's a pretty good size piece of wood. And in the middle of it, it has a palm tree. So I don't know if you know this or not, but like there are trees that if you break the branches, there's a star in the branch and the little twig part of it. Oh. So I just thought it was really cool that there was actually, it, to me, it looks like a palm tree. But whenever we brought it home, it was so heavy because it was still wet. And I picked it up. Um, well, I'm cleaning my cleaning the garage um, and uh, getting ready for Tina to come to my house and help me do these, these pieces of furniture. And I was like, holy smokes, it felt like a paper plate. I mean, it was so light, the difference just in wet to dry. Right. Yeah, it's crazy how much moisture, um, like, the trees and stuff hold, too. Uh, that's it's kind of a lot of, like, uh, the, the big thing then is, like, with the stumps, um, there's sand. Uh, and that's another thing, too. Um, when I took it to the miller to try to get that, because I wanted, a, like, cookie cuts from that, he only got me two, but he said the sand was so bad, like, it dulled his blade so fast. And so I only got two of them out of there. But um, but then I ended up, you know, keeping the stump. He was just going to burn it and get rid of it. And I was like, no, <laughs> no, let me just take it back. <laughs> <laughs> I want that 500-pound yeah, piece of I furniture. Know, I know, And he's like, okay. No, I get a lot of weird looks from my millers because I think that, you know, they're so old-fashioned on some of the stuff. They're so used to it, you know, one way. And I'm like, I can actually fix this. Like, I can make it something, you know, amazing. So... I do have to um, argue with them sometimes, or they'll be like, I really feel like I'm just taking your money, Tina. I was like, in this case, it's okay. Like, please just cut it for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She was showing, um, whenever I first went to her shop, she had this piece of wood. And I don't, I, I'm like you, mm-hmm. I don't want the perfect wood. Right. I want the stuff that got ate up by the termites because uh, there were all these holes in it and, you know, where it's like, had some wood rot. And like in the crotch of the tree or places like that, just to me, that's the character. And that's the stuff that you can fill with the epoxy and just make yeah. it beautiful. So I agree with her. I, I you know, who wants perfect? Right. I, I want the nastier, the better. Yeah, right. Exactly. No, it is. And then it, and it is. It's cool because it's like, you know, I just everyone has different ideas on it. But to me, that's like the pieces I really love salvaging. And then also I'd love to show people like the befores and after because a lot of even that oak that you got, I mean, you know, it looks so dirty, you know, and then it's like once, but I'm always like, well, trust me, once it's cleaned, I promise it will be, you know, it's going to be gorgeous. And so, and it normally is, it's, it's like always some of my most beautiful pieces. And so I, those seem to have the real red in them too. And so I don't, I don't know, it's definitely a. It's definitely something I enjoy working with, is the imperfections. I think the only one out of all the ones that we're doing is the reception countertop. Yep. That one's close to perfect. Yes. Everything else has either been ripped down the middle so we can turn it inwards and make a river down right. the middle or, or you know, 
has the holes that we can do the river with. So yeah, that'll those will be fun. I I can't wait to see how those turn out. So yeah, if you get on the page then too, you'll get to see. We'll do before and afters of those as well. So yeah, it'll be fun. Um, so if you're looking for something along those lines, again, there's so many different ways and different things that she can make. Um, you'll definitely want to follow her, get in touch with her via the Facebook page. And she does answer really quickly because I, I, that's how I got a hold of you. Yep. And she has a shop up North, um, where she puts it all together and has it all laid out. So you can see that she took me in and showed me the process and how she does it all. And, um, it's really nice. Of course, I'm not going into business or anything crazy like that. I just didn't. My husband said, okay, this is this is your budget. And right. so I knew I, that meant I had to learn how to do something new. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be an expert by the time we're done. <laughs> and then I'll be like, I have a couple of pieces in my house I'd like to replace with something that has wood and character like that. But after that, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's it's is it's just so much more work, but yeah, I think I think you'll enjoy it too. I'm excited um, to see how our pieces turn out, and then uh, putting it all together. Me too. Um, so you've been doing this for about five years. What's the most creative thing you've done so far? Uh, I do feel like that oak is probably my most creative as far as uh, as far as with the clear epoxy. It's my most challenging one. Um, and then I was trying to think of um, the stump was another one because it weighed so much trying to move it around. We we went through like three different carts to try to wheel that around to get to where we could epoxy it. Where it could, we had to wheel it into the kiln to dry it, you know. And I was like, this is the most ridiculous thing ever. But <laughs> <laughs> it turned out really nice. Yes, it did. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. I feel like everything that I do has a some sort of creativity to it because you kind of have to think outside the box when you're you're doing it you're filling it you're wanting to make it perfect for whoever's getting it the customer so um i've been watching pinterest so i texted tina and i said because obviously we i've got all these boxes set up in my garage that are the molds and uh, so i had asked can you pour all at once and that's not your preference. So will you explain how, why that is? Because, you know, it's kind of like anything. Whenever you watch it on TV, is it true? Does right. it work? Uh, the biggest thing is, is I have, from what I have learned or done and from mistakes, is I, it's best to do at least two pours. And really, you can do like three or four. Um, the biggest thing is then a, a light sanding between each layer. So, so it has grip. And so... Um, but the wood will soak up some of it, which you do want, so it adheres. It's like a glue. And then, um, but then, like, I, you know, that's kind of the cool thing with epoxies. Once you kind of figure it out, you do have some kind of work with it you can do, you know, to to get it to where you want it to look, you know. So I voids, or if it's not level, I pour a little extra in one area here, and then I can make it make it level where yeah, and others, you know, in different areas, it wouldn't have worked out. Okay, so we are near the end of the show. Tell them again how to get a hold of you. Uh, the best way to get a hold of me would be on my Facebook page, The Lumber Woman and Company. Um, and I do have a, uh, a shop up north. It's at 1209 North Kansas Avenue, Suite A. And if I'm not there, but I would... I usually do everything by appointment, but so it is just easiest to message me on Facebook and then I'll respond as soon as I can. All right. And if you're looking to buy or sell, be sure and give us a call, 785-213-5188. You can check us out on Facebook, um, Preferred Advisors Team. And same thing, Preferred Advisors Team is at the website.com. Um, so check us out there. And we'll be back next week to talk more about how what the process is. And hopefully we'll have some pictures to share. So thanks for listening to Real Estate 101. Thank you for listening to Real Estate 101 with the Carrie Brown team from Preferred Advisors. 